unleash his duelist tendencies on a neon and try to be one of those front runners of the team as we are going to see the defense this time look to just play forward on a main no dish pushes does seem like tsm with the a split first blood good for sabrosa it has immediately responded so not a lot of gain from the first blood fight still lurking but how about Corey? just kind of sneaks through drop does find another elimination, which means Pancakes is by himself. A lot of utility to potentially spend, including the flashpoints and, more importantly, the delay of maybe an aftershock to come through. But the take is on. Help coming from Calm as he gets over towards Link. Up top, Pancakes. Good for the next elimination. And now Wardell, last one left, and he is left completely isolated and alone, stuck by a ropes. Yeah, and Spike down on the opposite side of A, so he's going to have to kind of backtrack to get back to that or try to brute force through the site with this Spectre. He does... Still has some abilities in place. Still got the Headhunter as well if he wants to look that way. But I like this from a crew. They're doubling up. They're pushing the spike. They know that they must be getting in behind Wardell. They actually do split up now, though. It could give Wardell a couple of 1v1s. They need to be careful not to do that. And there they do gather back up again. The playthrough. They get proactive here on the arcade side of B. Pushing the top side of the map. And again, this is typical. Defenses are usually going to pick something to push to get information early. Either set up a quick <laughs> flank or get some early action. I mean, like we had mentioned from when we cast this map yesterday, really four choke points. Yep. So you've got a one-four chance. You cannot sit back. You, yeah, <laughs> exactly. and you can't sit back. as If you're not proactive on defense, you're going to get pigeonholed in sights and get crushed. So this is the typical meta that we've been seeing. Again, this map's still very new. Everyone's still learning. But defense is being aggressive. is kind of a necessity. Uh, Com was hoping for an early snake bite. Not really allowed to get that to delay the inevitable plant. Defense now trying to scramble and see what they want to do to retake here. You've got two defenders at B. They're going to be late to the party. Three others are actually close and looking to contest very early on. Aftershock coming through. It's going to try to delay some of the pressure from the top side of the platform. Corey tagged down low. Paint shells will finish off Wardell. And now even behind that, even more concussions coming out as Neon tries to work forward. Kimpeki also in with the fast lane. The eliminations coming through so far, but time is starting to tick. There are the kills. Pancakes, Kempeki combining for more. And now it's just down to Sabrosa. 1v3. Finds a Phantom to work with. One elimination, but Pancakes, who's already stuck, means that top and a crew in that situation. Able to fight through all of that and make it happen. A bit of a weird setup here. You know, Wardell had the solo AR last round, the kind of hero rifle that we monitored, but he was two away from an ult. I think a lot mm -hmm. of the play was get one kill. And then even if you fall, you've got your tour ready to go. He was short of that coming into this round, so they do repurchase back up wow. for him. It's expensive, and even more so now that Kampeki and Neon have found two more kills after the first blood, giving us a 5v2. Yeah, it's been a pretty radical defense here from a crew. Again, just getting aggressive this time towards B-Tree area, and they come up with three kills, and they don't give up a single player. So TSM very far behind in this. They're swinging the spike back through A-Main. There are two defenders still here on the site. We are actually seeing Corey kind of slip through B site towards Arcade. Now playing maybe under the tunnels. So they're remaining. really just split up Spy here. There's really nothing a. they can do off of each other. On the field, so you kind of have to hope and pray that these ARs do cleanly come to at least bear some fruit. Otherwise, Wardell may be just trusted to find these opening picks. But once again, they're just mm -hmm. continuing to play from the spawn side. They haven't even gone across ropes to play anything from bridge yet. Yep. And it looks like for now, a crew is just happy to kind of keep reading it. Yeah, they're playing a little bit more back this time. They are letting Neon get a little bit aggressive over towards the top side of B just to get a little bit of intel. But other than that, they're just kind of sitting back in A site. They're giving up dish. They're giving up A halls. And they're just playing more passive on site since they have more of a stack towards B. They just want to try to, you know, hold these tight corners in the back, force TSN to spin utility, trying to clear their way into site. They will just keep dry peeking, though. And this is great because they're getting a lot of space for free. They haven't had to use any utility. Well, now it's on to Calm. He's right around the corner from a couple of players. Wardell down low, first blood, but it's immediately countered. Viper's ball goes up, snake bite goes down. Rossi from the corner, after track trying to push Calm out of this position, but he stayed alive so successfully with their own utility. Now a corner, that's going to be good for Electo. Wardell in the corner, though, for three off the tour. Still two more shots to play off of it. He catches Neon on the boost from what was going to be a showstopper play. Deadly, and he even has another out coming into this one as well. Wow, what a momentum swinger. Absolutely. Big aggression, though, here from a crew. They're getting into A halls here. Not making this easy on TSM to find space anymore. Yeah, this and all out for Kempeki. Mm -hmm. The thing about it was it was a grav well with the fault line trying to set Kempeki up for what would have been some chain lightning, but that's actually a push back now. So 
you've kind of you've got nothing to work with here defensively. You got to reset up, and the overdrive is still out for the finger guns. Yeah, they're relying on you know calm to hold B with the viper spit, but now he even has to rotate off that to help reinforce A. Maybe they're kind of second guessing how they want to set this up. They do still have three defenders near this A site. And Corey's low on health, so there's still some chances here for a crew. But TSM making some headway. Uh, what a big pick from Pancakes up top. Puts down Corey after the null command had come through. And Pecky Neon also getting involved. Just Wardell and Rossi left. 2v4 right situation. Aftershock comes through. Pancakes going to use that to clear off the boxes. And then the peaks come out. But it's Wardell with a sniper rifle. You almost feel like anything is possible after what happened last round. But this time, much more challenging than... Sure. Again, th this map, there really is no set meta that we know works. Right? I mean, it, it's still so new. We know that there's a couple things that work. Like having a good primary controller. Having a mm -hmm. breach has seemingly been very positive for a lot of teams. But outside of that, I think there's still a lot of experimentation going on. As we see TSM looking to... Try to do a little bit of split pressure, right? They're going to go arcade side B with a couple players, but they're also still in A-halls with the bulk of their forces, including the spike. So trying to keep that defense a little bit on edge here. Try to see if they can get the main advantage on their main focus of attack. But as I say that, the A-halls play could have been more of a feint, looking like maybe they're looking for a B split. Hard to say. Yeah. This is the first time we've seen TSM try to even threaten through bench at the moment to top side B. The defense still very calm through the middle of the map for the most part. Neon watching Arcade on the cross, right from the front door canteen. The spike making its way over through Tree. And that's Ken Pecky who's going to be watching that play. There's the corner cross. Wardell falls. Cosmic Divide comes through offensively. The boom bot is out. So are the paint shells to help out Ken Pecky in case the flank comes through from the back. Rolling Thunder now in. And Ken Pecky has stayed alive, and there has been no yeah. breach here for TSM at all. No, they still have Lockdown available, though, so they might be able to use it to try to get control of this B site, but Campeki up top of tower going to find Corey. They have the two-man advantage now, and it's just getting worse for TSM as each yeah. second passes. No more Lockdown Grand available well. now. <laughs> yeah, this one's going to be over. Ten seconds left. Waco Sabrosa at this point. I think you just back away, try to save, maybe get a couple of kills if they chase you down, which is exactly what Pancakes was trying to do. But for TSM, it's just like their moment to go. So they definitely have some big tools to utilize to get a site, but firepower is one of the things they don't have in this round. Just that one Vandal on Aleko. The only round TSM have won was on the back shoulders of Wardell. Of an ace. Yeah. Yep. That's not a good look. No. <laughs> you need, you need as more. As good as Wardell can be, you can't yes. expect all of your rounds to be won by Wardell finding three plus kills. Oh, hey, at least they're coming dish this time. It's a little yep. bit of a split on A. Rolling Thunder to clear sight. But nobody from a oh crew is actually on the site. And Com just spams through the double nebula. And tallies up a first blood, plus more damage under Rossi. Right Second clip also being sent through. Aftershock queued up and then thrown. Pancakes looking to flush players out. And it's just so good. It's just the awareness that Pancakes has of where exactly he's throwing that and where exactly the peak would happen is beautifully done. Ken Pecky now, high gear, coming out. Also the relay bolt, unreal stuff. It's just... Too complete. I know this is a light buy round, just pistol upgrades, but still, it's just another prime gaming flaws on the table, unless Corey has something to say about it. Aim. He does. That's one thing. It's a good. That's a good opening statement. Does he have a rebuttal? No one that comes shallow and have like basically a guaranteed trade. You know, yeah, she definitely can be a handful to deal with. Ooh. Ooh, that was that was almost dirty from Dion. First look we've had towards A ropes hits from TSM. Nebula to block off the actual point of ingress here as they continue to try to zone off maybe defenders from getting to Lincoln. This is the first real TSM look where they've stalled reinforcements by this positioning and they deal with calm quickly, which is also something they have not been able to do in previous True. rounds. So now a crew kind of have to restructure, see what they want to do. Uh -oh. Sabrosa, trigger discipline. Does he not see the player up top? Sure does, Sabrosa for the double. Spike gets planted and TSM in a 4v2. Yeah, you feel like they have to win this one now. They have a four on two. So Rose has done well playing under rope, catching that rotation. He's ready for Campecki if he comes through the slider. It's going to be a very tough retake here for Campecki and Neon, especially with an op involved, and that doesn't give Neon a lot of flexibility. They just have to play for exits here, honestly. They have plenty of cushion to do so. Well, the relay bolt does actually connect. Fault line to counter. Rossi deals with Campecki. Now it's just on to Neon with an operator. You feel like Neon will just allow this operator to stay in his hands. Probably not going to play for too much, maybe outside of an aggressive peak for an exit, which he does get one. TSM, do you chase this down? Yes. Do what they want to. Down available for TSM, but they're close to a few of their own. Yeah. 
defense this time, pushing through Arcade and Dish simultaneously. They're trying to take away all of Bridge, yep. and there's nothing for Rossi Run, to Rossi. do, but decides... <laughs> well, zip, zip, fly, fly, Rossi, get out of there. And this is kind of the more typical thing you see on defensive Fracture, right? Just getting control of something. They're setting up the quick flanks on A, setting up for that retake while still leaving a little bit behind on B in case they need the defense there. Oh, Hanpeki, good information. Relay Bolt comes through. It does actually connect. Sabroza able to at least reward one elimination in response, but it's not going to be good enough for anything near an A take as we go into a very early 4v3 with still 60 seconds to play. Yeah, a lot of time here for TS and the Stroke trying to figure this out, but they are a man down. And again, a lot of space of the map being taken by a crew. Big shot from Wardell, though. Rossi turns uh, at just the wrong time. Campeki, big, now has alt available if need be. May not require it. Won't even matter. Doesn't get it the choice. Wardell takes him off the board the op. Oh! <laughs> it is a one-for-one one trade, but the damage has been dealt again off the long-range barrel of Wardell. Gucci, Aleko, 1v1. Dust may need to change his pants. Yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a thing. And Aleko's going to get this plant off. Spike Gucci planted. wants the challenge early. X-ray off. See what he sees. Nothing past the Radiantite corner as of yet. No utility for Gucci. Has to do this dry. Comes around the corner and ah. Uh, Aleko just gets caught looking the wrong way. An opportunity Not for TSM just missed. Yeah, he's got no intel. He's stuck behind his spike. He's just having to get in stacks very well you defensively. Being very dynamic Let's on their play. setups. Another round where the tour comes out. Defensive aggression coming out with the Rolling Thunder around the corner. No! Sabrosa deep. He was also, I believe, affected by the Rolling Thunder, but taps away and finds the head of Neon. Kenpeki also in the overdrive on the flank. And oh boy, they melt. Two kills come through. And that's all of the attacking spawn completely cleared, yeah, including the spike that's down. Yeah. The rest of the attack is coming through B side. They have kind of bypassed Com, but Com could flank them at any moment. And again, the biggest problem is that the spike is down, but Wardell. Port of Force. They even get to pull the trigger. Calm with the headshot from behind. And it is just now Corey and Rossi left. Much the way of the half at this point. I mean, this has been kind of deja vu. Again, it makes you question, why does TSM pick this map? Yeah, dude. No official results. They clearly have some strengths on some other maps we've seen. But they, I, I'm surprised they didn't pick Split. I mean, I know that a crew has, you know, been really good on split. I don't think they've lost a game yet, actually, since they put this five together. But TSM has won split every game this tournament so far, I believe. I know Breeze was hot, too. But the fact that you don't have any assists, I don't even think I've seen a full flash come through yet. Maybe now we have, as Kaori will find a first blood. Around the corner, Kanteki looking to still keep the aggression on, and he does get punished. Pay kicks for one in response, but getting suppressed and getting chased does get away. And there she peek. Flash comes through to push him back. Wardell also in the mix, and it looks like TSM finally hit the go. Next week, winner again gets to play guard for a slot in the main event. So definitely a lot yeah. on the line here. And Sub Rosa, nice start. It's a trap onto Neon and gets the frag. Good use of utility and pistol work there. This actually puts a lot of pressure on a crew who were looking to kind of set up Neon to make noise towards A by the How look is of it. Zip this coming right okay. there. Did you see that? No. What's attaching him to the zip line? Is he just floating? <laughs> Hopes and dreams. I guess, yeah. <laughs> Kenfeki through the nebula. To test it nearby, but Rossi actually more deterred by somebody else. Aftershock comes through. It's actually going to stall Kenfeki from being able to chase down the kill. And in the same moment, Aleko grabbing the double. Now. Okay. Oh boy. Okay. Stop. Not like this. High gear is nuts. <laughs> it is nuts. But Corey able to get in behind, leaving Calm all by his lonesome here. Also, Rose is low on. Switch situation where somebody sure. kind of peaks early and then backs up just for the shoulder, and then Kampeki can slide underneath it. We've seen that a couple of different times, and it's really been successful mm -hmm. for them. So, yep. off the pistol loss, now it's on to a crew to try to respond into the SMGs of TSM. And I like this from TSM. Get a little bit more aggressive. You know you have the firepower. Grab well, paint shells combo. But one is oh, thrown out in response, and that actually pushes TSM back a touch. That's big, because you got to slow that down. There's so many spot-clearing abilities that a crew have with this comp between the paint shells, the boom bot, the stuns of the neon in the breach, you know, the grab wells of Astra, the snake bites of Calm. Like, right there. you have to slow them down and not let them get space, otherwise they can just right start there. clearing out angles and just have such a potent attack. So you are seeing them double back up here on A. Flash comes through. Sabrosa, grab well, just to try to split up this offense. Fault line does affect. 
Oh, and then a flash also coming through, but Sabrosa's allowed to survive here. They know he's in the corner, and especially now. Relay Bolt comes out, Pain Kicks finally with a jump peek, but Aleko is there to at least find one trade, but it's not enough. Those are two SMGs that are going to be picked up, and all of a sudden we're 3v3. Bro, and they gonna if win with they classics? pick up these weapons, that <laughs> should be even firepower, too. Are they going to win with classics? I just want to know. I guess you can't tell me yet. You don't read the future, left. but if they wind up winning this round, this would be devastating. As we are seeing them now start pinching onto B. Corey trying to find a good time and gets caught with his pants down, though. At least a fragment lands the kill on Campeki to ease that pain. Back into a two on two. Spike still not committed. This long range battle, though, was a difficult one for Gucci. Yeah. Here, might be able to find themselves out. Big round We've here seen for this TSM. Stack from a crew. The thing is, TSM are have at least not yet thrown their breach up towards drop. That was a big problem for a crew versus version one. If you remember back to yesterday, and now they looks like they've got free dish control, and Neon's going to try to scout this out with Kampeki. Yeah, they're just kind of playing back and waiting to see if TSM are going to aggress this top side of the map, which is smart. Like that's what defenses have to do. They have to push something. They get some intel. Mm -hmm. And it's just a guessing game. In this situation, Wardell pushes bottom side A instead. So that's really the difference. And we also see Rossi has pushed bottom side B. So they're pinching the bottom side of the map. And they do have one player sitting here kind of waiting for that. It's calm. But, oh, he's been spotted. Wait, has he been? Or Hello, has Sabrosa? He? Okay. Okay. About to say, you might need to go see your optometry. <laughs> But with that information on the aggressive push through, now a crew quickly rotating through Arcade. Corey's here. Depression comes out, but the zero point, it does tag up two. Both players defensively for TSM. Hunkered up in the canteen. Aleko, first one forward. Does go one for one. That's not bad. The problem is, can Ross... But, uh, yeah, all in all, TSM doing what they need to do to get back into this one. Yes, absolutely. Never well, in doubt, dude. I never questioned coming. TSM picking this map. Not once. <laughs> Didn't hear me one time. No, well, pick. How? no, never. Yeah, I, I had faith the entire time, TSM fans. Don't you worry. I'm on the Hopium too, guys. I promise. <laughs> Good information here for Corey. As he sees Neon go right through the toxic screen up top the B tower. But how does Corey survive through this potential play? As that B tower position is a huge one for a crew just to get for free. You've got Com oh, yeah. working from the bottom side, and TSM are just looking to maybe contest the cross as four players are either waiting in Canteen or B-Link. Yeah, they're just waiting for the retake, which they have Aleko on Rolling Thunder. That's going to be a big tool to use once the spike goes down to try to get back into the site. And again, you're kind of forced to play retake on this map a lot defensively. If you push the wrong side or you overstack, you know, you can't just play sites basic. You know, you have to try to gamble a little bit, and so it just kind of puts you in situations where you're going to have to just have really good retakes. And... Well, it may not even come down to that. So Rosa just strikes for two right away. Yeah, I love that. Zero point out. The peak comes in simultaneously. You go two for one. However, Gucci still gets on and will be allowed to plant. Com has not revealed themselves. Actually, no, Corey gets the kill before the spike gets fully planted. Massive moment, although Com still coming from the backside over through B main. Continues to put a bit of a split pressure out of TSM. Although most of that pressure now has been alleviated, leaving Ken Pecky at B Tower for a 1v3, which is a sheriff and not a lot of time. Deadly timing on this B site. Oh, didn't we break the zero it. Zero point continues. Yeah, I was going to say, it continues to find value for him. They get spotted three players at least. Yep. I think so. And this changes everything for a crew. Yeah, look at the defensive pressure through A dish up top. Pressure starting for a crew to come over towards Wardell's direction. Has an operator with him. One shot and get out would be the question. Can he do it? This is the first. Here comes the second peak, but Rendezvous yeah. allows him to get away. Yeah, again, kind of use that like a jet dash in many ways just to get yourself out of dodge and still take those fights that would normally be kind of one and done. You kind of eliminate that risk as he now takes a new angle on side A site. A crew looking mm. to split A, and it really is only... Wardell here, and again, they have a lot of alts to put into use to attack this site. Wardell trying to get himself into the corner here with the op. And it, I mean, he is done for, sure. Yeah. Fast track, though, does get mostly delayed by the gravity well. Counter rolling thunder coming through defensively. It does find a lot of value. TSM moving quickly, but can they find any kills? That's the question. So far, no. Decay starts to come through, but Aleko getting around the Viper's Pit does allow first blood to happen finally on the Neon. 23 seconds. The spike is down as Wardell takes never out Gucci. Planted. And no, never even attempted to get it on the site, really largely. So now it's just down to the eliminations. 3v3, the situation. 13 seconds on the clock. Wardell still watching from drop. 
Able to take down one more into Pancakes, and Campeki's out. Uh, there's really not an opportunity for him to come and back and maybe even find this. And Wardell gets one more elimination. Come play with Wardell through the Viper's Pit. Just connects. That was on to Gucci, who had the spike, by the way. So, like, that blind shot very well may have been a huge difference maker as well. But a crew on pistols with a stinger. Heavy stack over towards B desk and arcade. Bench rather, not desk. There's no desk over there. Cross comes through. Corey, a little bit uncomfortable at the moment. Campeki actually finds elimination plus a weapon. And then, oh, right over to the top. Gets away from what looked to be maybe a crossing angle that could have been held. And with that, now all of a sudden, Campeki's got a rifle to play with in a 5v4. Here. Yeah, good start for oh, a crew. I think they can build off of it. Aleko says no. Able to get a kill at the aftershock there onto old gut. As this B attack is being slowed down. Spike finally is going to get planted, however. Now we're on equal numbers. See if TSM have their mm -hmm. retaken shoes on. I don't know what kind of shoes they would be, but they need them. Joe Stopper to try to re-break in. Neon throws it out actually to stall, pardon me. And then flashed up with the Stinger, finds a kill, 5 HP. Tries to make a greedy play for the rifle, not going to make a difference as Pancakes and Com now watching from the back entrance towards Tunnel. Oh, and Pancakes, how good is he? Double with the Sheriff, leaves it all in the Sabrosa. Thrifty, potentially top-decked card here. Sabrosa in. Cosmic Divide comes through, Fault Line will affect, but Sabrosa no. tried to hold and... TSM for a retake. It's a massive round for TSM, by the way. Uh -oh. oh, no. Aggressive what? peak for Mordell punish. And I was going to say, this round for TSM, if they lose this, they're all pretty much zeroed out in economy. This is exactly. going to be not just 11. This is looking like 12 if a crew win this. So TSM need to find the way to get this 4v5. And even exchange now turns into a 3v4. Rossi trying to get away, not allowed to. A crew, big numbers advantage. Yeah, they're about to accrue the round. You know what I mean? I do know what you mean. Yeah, which is it's, it's an interesting word, a crew, because you know what that means, gathering something, but it's also a right, crew, yeah. a crew of players. So it's an interesting little mix there. I love that you're fascinated by this. <laughs> I just think it's a cool name. <laughs> Fair Respect enough. it. Respect the brand. Corey Leco, good aftershock oh that forces Gucci to stall. Fault line does not connect in time though to maybe even confirm a kill. Neon watching the corner cross, and now focuses over towards Jens, which is where Aleko is currently residing. <gasps> Missed oh, shot, wow. but Aleko what? cannot confirm. Long range specter shots cannot get the full okay. kill. After the reload, though, the more difficult second fight through the nebula does connect, so now we've got a 2v3. There is hope for TSM. They have the firepower, they have some time, Enemy remaining. but that mm. might just end it. And Corey has to back away. Man. Little Bulldogs having to come out here again. First fire of that gun, very powerful now. And just in general, still a pretty viable weapon. So they're not too hamstrung, but certainly a crew have some pros coming yeah. into this one. This round could be the game, by the way. TSM are force yeah. buying here. So yep. very true. Must win round for TSM. Rolling Thunder. All right, the take is going to be in. Ken Pecky, high gear, finds one, also deletes the rendezvous. Not that it's going to make much of a difference because Wardell's playing from eight halls. Thing is, now he's about to be completely isolated. This aftershock is going to be it. So the spike should be planted, and now TSM have to retake 3v4. Good luck. They do have a lockdown available. Aleko's one away from Rolling Thunder. They have Null Command as well, so they have some options. They need to make it work because, like you said, their economy is going to be busted if this doesn't work. They have to send it. There's the Null Command. And Pecky had already thrown out a replay bolt, and you still have a oh, snake bite coming through, and they overall. So, and that's been kind of the key differences. And while we're seeing this rolling, then they're coming to play though for an aggressive bottom B push, and the catch okay. is calm, nicely done. And that's what I'm talking about. They haven't really had that happen much for them this all half. They aren't able to go over and collect the weapon though. So now Wardell by himself, decent to go one for one, and also secure some damage on the pancakes. Who now wants to actually zone forward by generators? Aleko, last couple of shots left. The Spectre gets the reload. Down still available on Rossi. No alts in play for a crew. And everybody just inched forward on their seats a little bit more. I feel like <laughs> that last round. Defensively, three man stack over towards B. The crew once again. Going to use four members to play through Dish. Calm, the only lone member 
kind of play off of his own toxic screen. And actually, that could lead to a 1v2. Mm -hmm. The bros are around the corner. Tom holding tightly. Wall goes up. Oh, Broza. Nice correctional shot to find the headshot. Now the fast lane goes down as a crew try to hit. Showstopper well is for Neon. As Ken Pecky is able to find first blood, Showstopper to create space, and that's going to lead to a plan. Yeah, he's just kind of scaring TSM back to make sure that they have side control and the plant. Now it's going to be a four-on-four -four retake. TSM need it. Again, they need all three to try to force that over time. Campecki, though, shutting Sabrosa off on the bottom side of the map. Not going to allow any more room to come from there. It's now mostly going to be coming from Dish and A-Halls. He kicks, here's this. Oh, here's a lockdown. They need this to work. Aftershot could deal with it, though. Yeah, it yep. should delete it. Does it? No, it doesn't actually delete it. So wait a second. TSM are still possibly able to push this back. All the last members are sitting over towards A-Halls. Fragment goes out. There's still flashes to play with, but they're trying to challenge our TSM. Aleko, could he be heroic again? Overdrive out for Kanpeki. Long range shots are not going to do it. But you've got to stick for the defuse. And there's not enough time. The crew will survive.